Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for being here with us this evening. We are just tickled to have everybody tonight. How is everybody doing? How are you doing, Watchful? Yeah, I'm doing good. Shoot, what have I what have I been doing? Oh, we did a chicken show. That was fun. We did a chicken uh, show. Yeah, my daughter is in 4-H, and we did a chicken show. So we uh, packed up a bunch of birds, a goose, some ducks, some chickens. Nobody was supposed to buy any chickens at this chicken show, and somehow <laughs> we walked away with two more chickens. But they're really cool chickens. They're called Naked Necks, or also uh, Turkins, uh, Turkin Chickens. Which, uh, can you check, the, can you check the calendar and see if we're supposed to have a guest tonight? Uh, I'm sure. I was trying to get to it. Uh, <laughs> um, let's see here. No, I don't have anybody listed. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I was like, sorry, guys, bear with us. The uh, Our cam link was ringing, and I was like... Um, are we supposed to have a guest? Did you know Maybe somebody you forgot? Permanent teeth in just um, well, they hung <laughs> up. Okay. So that, that was weird. I didn't recognize them either. I was like, uh, but how do you accidentally call our show? Well, I don't know. Maybe somebody <laughs> died. Maybe one of our, maybe Kip or one of our regulars opened their browser and it had the, uh, the show link in the, in the browser maybe. And it, you know how when you open a browser, it refreshes the page. Yeah, I'm just, wow, I've never, uh, okay, That's, I guess there's a first for everything. So, yeah. how are, how is everybody this evening? I see a bunch of people in the chat, you guys doing good, I see Lori and Chuck and, oh, Kippy, oh, Kip, how are you? And William and Cheryl and Pam and <coughs> oh, sorry. Janet and Mr. Coffee over there and um uh, dustin bramley uh, i saw that um sean greener has been posting videos man i love watching his videos he is such a oh uh, yeah he's been posting one every day now yeah and if you're not on his channel go over to his channel and hit the thumbs up and hit the subscribe help him out he's got amazing content he's just a wonderful wonderful person and honestly guys yeah. i don't know how how long we will have that blessed man in our life. He has had supposed to have been passed on now for like 10 times over the last 10 years. He is way past what the doctors expected him to last. And uh, I know that he currently still doesn't uh, feel well. So he will push through. He's a trooper. He won't let on that anything is wrong, um, except to the yeah. people that are really close to him. So make sure you guys show him some love. It's um, his heart is as big as it gets. I've never met someone that's that's so genuinely a loving, compassionate person in my life than it comes to Sean. Yeah. Um, speaking of which, on the flip side of the coin, uh, I haven't been able to get a hold of Stephen, and his realtor office has not seen him, and hmm. um, his phone goes straight to voicemail. They haven't seen him? Man, that's not good. Mm -mm. Does he have any family members that we can call or check in on? Not that I'm aware of. He had a girlfriend. Should we file, a, should we file a missing persons report on him? Uh, I'm going to follow up with this realtor office, on, um, yeah. which is tomorrow, and see what the scoop is. I think um, he there's a high likelihood he may be... Uh, and lock up. Uh, well, you should still be able to find that out. Yeah. I mean, he, I mean, he's somebody that you've been witnessing to. He's been a friend in the past, you know, if there's yeah. a way to find out what's going on with him. Yeah. Um, I, I guess I could start going down that route. I was just hoping that he yeah. was on vacation or something, but it, it, you know, when we were talking to him last, he was, uh, he was just boasting and very aggressive, and um, yeah. it is what it is. I'm just hoping that, you know, he wasn't humbled. So, man, there's been so much news. I mean, the news oh, is yeah. just, like, 
Off the charts. Um, I did watch that episode of Tim Pool that you shared with me. Man, that was really oh, yeah. good. He made some really yeah. good points. Yeah. Yeah, that's a really good example of a good debate also. Uh, you know, a, a thoughtful debate going back and forth. For anybody who wants to study debating, he's a he's an expert debater. He really is. <laughs> yes. uh, but in that, in, in that episode, he's talking about... Um, you know, what happens when people lose confidence in their governing bodies? And that's what they're debating. Uh, and the other, on one side of the coin, uh, it's it's discussing, uh, and this is what uh, he was misunderstanding Tim on, is he was, it, it's almost like they were arguing completely different points. Because the gentleman yeah. that was on the show was arguing, you know, more for, localized confidence whereas tim was arguing more like when people lose gov confidence in the federal government you know like yeah um he wasn't keeping up with tim tim was tim's brain was operating on a more uh high-paced frequency you could tell the other guy was grasping for straws yeah because he was making the point of like you know there's only 137,000 federal law enforcement, federal officers, there's no way that they can enforce, you know, their whatever laws they come up with on 330 million people without manipulating information and and, and fooling people. Because there's, there's this idea that um, the government is almost godlike and that they have superpowers, that they can, you know, uh, enforce their will on anybody at any time when that's simply not the case. Um, it's it's just perception, really. And that was kind of, we should post that in the community. It's such a good discussion. It is. Natasha, thank you so much um, for yeah, the thank Super you, Natasha. Chat. Uh, Natasha, if you have any pressing questions that you want to get off your chest, just fire it away and We'll uh, make sure that we can get that to you. So, yeah, the uh, episode that he's referencing is he really kind of broke down how um, societies in some way collapse and the way the Civil War took off and how mm -hmm. the Roman Empire collapsed. And mm -hmm. he made some really good points because most people didn't see it coming. Most people just... You know, they knew that the the air was thick with folks being divided. But, you know, it kind of snuck up on them. And yeah. it's in the in the loss of confidence is really kind of a key element that I had not thought about, because let's say the, the sheriff comes to your door or to our friend's door. When the confidence is lost, people are like. Um, you're, I, I don't care. I, I don't even know if you're real police. Let me, let me right. call the police. Um, you know, it's it where they start taking matters into their own hands. Whereas, you know, neighborhoods start having neighborhood watches and patrols where they dictate who comes in and who, um, is allowed in their own neighborhood because they've lost confidence and, and yeah. the local officials and then one thing leads to another and then in one part of a, a small area uh, confrontations happen and shots are fired and then it happens again in another area and it just kind of snowballs because the you know the local authorities or the federal authorities are unable to resolve the issue because folks don't have any confidence that they can resolve it yeah um it, it was actually, um, it was, uh, he made a good point. It's something I'd never thought about. Hmm. Well, yeah. And you, and you combine that with what's been happening over the last several years with defunding the different authorities, uh, you know, and it's just like, not only do you lose confidence, not, it's not even a matter of losing confidence in the governing bodies, but even locally, it's just like with so many, leaving those positions to where they would keep the peace. Um, you know, you don't know who they've been replaced with because they went through, there was a period of time where they were required to, you know, take the jab. And a lot of people left both in the military and in law enforcement and even in our hospitals. And either they haven't been replaced or they were replaced with people who will just do anything they're told. So it's just like, how can you have confidence in these authorities 
who literally enforce crimes. And that was one of the points that he was making is that you literally have police officers that are supporting trafficking because they're just quote unquote doing what they were told. And that's how people lose confidence in those governing bodies is it's just like, yeah, they're, they're, they're arresting, they're arresting the victims and allowing the criminals to go free. So the people will only put up with that stuff for so long before they start forming their own communities and say no more. No, you're absolutely right. There's been several examples here recently. Earlier this week in New York, there was squatters that took over uh, a lady's rental property. She went there and they had been there for about 30 days and already uh, mailed, had their cell phone bill uh, mailed there. So they actually found a workaround She kicked them out, and because it was a unauthorized eviction, she got arrested. That's right. Uh, What about the people that broke into the property to begin with? Yep. Uh, I'm sure there was no signed paperwork. They had forced entry, but yet they totally skipped past that and protect the other side. The world has gone topsy-turvy. It is. Yeah. Good has become bad. Bad has become good. And everybody that's watching this sees it every day. You have families that are struggling to make their ends meet. Families that are, you know, they're counting change so that they can go to the grocery store and feed yeah. their family. But you have folks that are getting the red carpet treatment that have come here illegally and are given money, free place to stay, free phones, but yet the American citizens, they're not doing any of that for. I mean, it's a WTF with a massive question mark. I mean, someone please correct me if I'm wrong. What am I You're not wrong. No, no, you're not wrong. I mean, we've been watching the, 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 the controlled demolition of you know um our society for the last four years uh with those who with the governing bodies we've seen you know good people removed bad people put into place and you know people that are currently there not doing their job combine that with you know the inflation you know the disruption in supply chains the conflicts around the world i mean uh, and the and the rise of evil is you know it's like you know many people are afraid to let their children go to school because of the doc the indoctrination that's taking place in the schools. I mean it's like we're getting hit from every single angle. Like you said, wow. good is being called evil and evil is being called good. I, I mean I I just I I don't get it. It's yeah. it, you know it, it is what it is. We we knew that this was coming. It, it's yeah. it's clear. Uh, from scripture that it will be as uh, the days of Noah. It's just, and I know the answer to this speculation as well, but there's so many people that support this. And I understand that they're spiritually blind and they just can't see it. But for me, it's regardless, it's still mind boggling. It just is. I, I know the answer, but I yet can, I cannot, continue to wrap my head around it even though i know the answer (laughs) it's uh it's one of those watching a a train wreck in slow motion it's just uh seriously i'm literally watching things implode like a movie yeah yeah and and they continue to they don't get rid of you know failed laws they they continue to add more that continue that just strip away our freedoms uh, so it's not getting better. It's getting worse. Yeah. I mean, for the last 10 years, they, at every opportunity, at every turn of a corner, at any time there was any type of event that resulted in any type of form of violence from the bang bangs, they would take those opportunities to press how important it was. They were to remove these off the streets because they're yeah. not needed. And the first case that goes before a federal judge now says, you know what? Not only can you guys have them, but let's let the other folks have them too. Oh, yeah. Giving, 
giving them Second Amendment uh, ability. But here's the thing. The Second Amendment doesn't apply to folks that are breaking the law. They are That's breaking right. the law on, a, on, on their entry. Yep, they so are criminals. So it doesn't make any sense. And I, I mean, it, if there's someone here that supports this, I need to try to understand your position. Please. It, it's driving me bonkers. To, I, I can't make sense of it. Yeah. <laughs> and the folks are just are good with this. People are just good with it. And it's, it's driving me batty. Well, why you think why why you guys think about if you have any questions about that, we should move on to our next segment. What's on our next segment? Yeah, <laughs> I hadn't thought that far ahead. Um, <laughs> so the solar is- eclipses have been are not so we have a solar eclipse today and tomorrow, and it's also Pura, Purim, the festival of Purim. Uh, so we have that lunar eclipse that I believe that Kip, Kip talked about on Thursday. Uh, so. When is that happening? It, I think that's happening and it's tonight. Solar flare and like a mofo. Oh the, yeah, the sun is firing off flares and CMEs like a belt-fed machine gun. It's at a the KP index. If folks, if anybody feels physically off today, just know that it's not you. Ben was saying yeah. that the KP index is so high that people physically will be able to fill it. So. Yeah. If you have headaches or you've had any type of anxiety or any type of sleepiness or just anything that doesn't seem you, don't be alarmed. Um, This is normal. I didn't know this until I read into it, but uh, this tends to be normal. And uh, it's... uh, (laughs) And also expect more earthquakes. So we tend to see an increase on earthquakes when this radiation hits the earth. Which it's interesting because Dr. Thrapp was on here saying to, you know, look for earthquakes in Missouri. But he said 40 days after the eclipse. But this could be ramping up that that radiation, putting it into the earth that actually makes that happen. Yeah. You know, and someone made a good point in the comments. Um, You know, praying is really the answer. You know, some other person in the comments said, you know, we're at this point where praying isn't going to matter. Look, praying always matters. Right, it always you know, matters. It, it does. We, you Amen. know, when it comes to things of this nature right now, it doesn't matter what it is that you're praying about. Uh, the power of prayer has more power than anything on this planet. You know, it, God yep. has the ability to do whatever he wants, whatever he wants. It, and it has been clear lately that he is stepping up his presence and his signs. I mean, it's it's every day I see something. You know, uh, a year or two ago, sometimes I would go a month without seeing signs and stuff of that nature, and sometimes without even seeing any real prophetic news. Yeah. Now it's a multiple day occurrence. I'm losing track of it. It's happening so much. It's yeah, both prayer and fasting. And a good example of that is read Daniel nine. Uh, you know, Daniel prayed and he fasted for 21 days. And the angel said that the, you know, as soon as he started doing that, the word went out and they heard his supplication. So, you know, the, the, you know, God communicates to the angels when people are ready to receive information. So, you know, make sure you're pray praying and fasting and, you know, there may be things that you may not be, you know, you may not, that may not be available to pray for, but um, because it has to be available. So like if God is moving in a, in a certain direction and doing certain things, uh, you may not be able to pray contrary and ask, say, hey, please don't do this. But more, but what will happen is he may send a message to you saying, hey, you need to get out because, you know, such and such is about to happen. Uh, you know, look at all the people that, uh, you know, that one day, you know, in their prayer and meditations think, I don't, I probably shouldn't go into work today. And then sure enough, something happens at work that particular day. Uh, So yeah, prayer, prayer, um, let your requests be made known uh, and fasting, you know, allows you to hear better. So um, just look at Daniel. I mean, from the, from the time he started making supplication is when the word went out to the angels to go um, tell him stuff. All right. So, first world problems says I have a controversial question. Please, 
um, Kip, about not hating Israel, which I don't, but I don't understand why the Jews are the chosen people when they don't, whoop, uh, it's a, when they don't believe in Jesus and I do not offense indeed. Okay. Um, you, you understand what he's asking. And this is yeah. a really, this is a really, uh, common question that is really uh, it, it tests your bible knowledge here but I'll, I'll let you answer it watchful yeah so um god knows the future right so the jews are chosen for a reason because he knows um who they are and what they'll do right and partially why they don't believe in the messiah is because they are blinded it literally says that that the blindness of the jews uh, is spiritual, and that blindness will be removed once the fullness of once the fullness of the Gentiles comes to fruition. Uh, so that's why um, they don't believe in the Messiah, and not all Jews. There are some Jews that you know make the effort and and come to the realization that Yeshua what is the Messiah. Uh, but those who strictly adhere to the law and won't allow any um, any thing that they don't believe that fulfills the law um, into their consideration is part of the reason why why they're chosen. Um, there's there's a lot of people who believe that when um, the scripture says that Jesus will rule with a rod of iron, um, it's in reference to the Jewish people who 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 adhere to the law so strictly because they know every single commandment in the Torah. You know, um, the Jewish people drill those 613 commandments um, from childhood. You know, many of them have the Torah memorized. So, um, you know, they, without getting into, you know, speculation, suffice it to say uh, that God knows who they are and what they will do, and that them not believing in Yeshua is um, intentional for, for in, in part. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Explain. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. So, the, Israel is really the point of reference here. It's and it, it it has something to do with the Jewish people, but it's more about Israel, and it, it, it's prophetic in a sense that God knows the future and what's going to happen for Him. He's seen the beginning, the end. He's seen the whole nine yards. So it's not up until the very end when two thirds of the Jews have been killed by the armies invading and, and one almost conquering uh, Israel. And they're literally backed into a corner. And it is at that point that they proclaim they believe. And that's it, the exact moment that God opens a can and lays it on them. So that's yeah. according and to the even Bible, that's shoot- how it goes down. <clears throat> yeah, and even Yeshua says that he won't come back until they open him with welcome arms. Yeah, so it, this is all part of Bible prophecy. And yeah. for me, I believe everything that's in the Bible, everything. And we're literally watching Bible prophecy play out in real time. Even though the world is in such a chaotic state, what an amazing time to be alive. Just what an amazing time to be alive, to see everything literally unfolding right before our eyes and that's exactly how it goes down there's going to be you know the whole world is going to turn on israel it's already said that and you can already see it in motion you can see the united states right now um teeter-tottering teeter-tottering on that and my personal belief is once they turn on israel that will be the collapse of the country. This country has been blessed for so long because they have had the backing support of that nation. God always blesses the nations that support it and always curses the nations that condemn. It's a fact. All you got to do is look through history. And I'm pretty sure that that's why when you look in the Bible, there is no reference really to our country because at some point, it says all the nations turn on Israel, just like we will. We probably go poof. And at some point when everybody has Israel cornered and two-thirds of them 
have been killed. Oh, here's Kip. We expecting Kip? Oh, she wants. She's she she was. Um, she's got something to say in this regard. <laughs> I saw some capital <laughs> letters go by. Oh yeah, she's waving her hands like flagging me down. Let me add her in here. <laughs> All right, Kip, have at it. Community, and we're glad to have you here. Hey. Um, <laughs> this all, Israel being the chosen people, this all goes back to um, the fall of the watchers and Satan and all that. Um, there, how do I put this? Okay, so there were high level angels called watchers that were put over different areas of the earth. Now, this is out of the book of Enoch. And it is referenced several times in the Bible, but you really kind of have to know what you're looking for. And so it's something you really have to research out. So these high level angels were supposed to be the emissaries or the governors between man and God. They were supposed to uh, bring justice and righteousness, and they were supposed to be uh, God's emissaries to mankind. Unfortunately, they decided that number one, they were jealous of mankind, especially that mankind could have children. And they, they fell um, when they saw the beautiful daughters of mankind and they wanted to have children of their own. And so they, they basically sinned against God. And that you can find in Genesis 6, 5. Okay. So when that happened, God lost his emissaries to, to mankind. So, um, so he had, and, and the Bible tells us that Israel is his possession, his chosen land. That was the one strip of land that he kept for himself. And Abraham is the person that he made a covenant with to go to that land and be his chosen person and, and have a a generation or many generations of people who would love him, who would testify to him. And, and the Jews did that. They did that all the way up to Jesus. And the bulk of the, the Jews um, did not believe in Jesus. But you have to realize that the only reason we have a Bible, the only reason that we have Christianity is because of the Jews who did believe when the Messiah came. They did right. believe. And and that was Peter and the 12. And, and, you know, the Bible tells us that there were a lot more than 12 people following Jesus. He had hundreds and hundreds and thousands of people following him. So we honestly do not know. We know that when the Holy Spirit fell, there was uh, how many up in the upper room? 120? Yeah, that sounds about right. Okay, so there were 120 in the upper room. They were Jews. Mm -hmm. And then he, he in, in several places, he appeared to masses of people. And at one point it was either 500 or 5,000. I think it was 500. Um, so, so word spread fast, but it spread through the Jews. So even though the bulk of the Jews missed their Messiah, mainly because their leadership was evil, their king at the time was a man named Herod. Herod was not a Jew. He should not have been the king. He was an Edomite, so he was a descendant of Esau. And if you know, if you've been reading in your Bible, you'll know that Jacob and Esau were brothers. Esau was not a good guy, and he did not want anything to do with God. He really did not want his birthright, um, and so he sold it to his brother for a bowl of stew which meant right. here, you take the Jewish nation. I don't want to lead the Jewish, Jewish nation. I want you to do it. So anyway, so the person who was in charge at the time of Jesus was an evil, evil Edomite by the name of Herod, right? So, so the people were also being led astray by false preachers. So the Pharisees were, yeah, were the, lawyers and yeah. preachers were false. So well, and they were and they were legalistic, which is a tendency, and this is a result of the nef the nephilim and the evil that they taught mankind. Is um, and you can see this even with Cain, where he made the cities in order to control the people. That is a mentality 
from the the nephilim in order to control uh people so the tendency because of you know it's not it's it's human nature just because it's it's gone on for so long um you know things that we learn in our culture and our society just that have just persisted from the beginning days when the nephilim were on the earth it mm -hmm. causes people to lean towards legalism and yeah. you can see this with the church of ephesus because the church of ephesus started the other seven churches you know mm -hmm. they were so eager to love god and love their neighbors but as they were getting attacked by the evil that surrounded them, they became more and more legalistic to the point where they stopped loving people and started ostracizing people and kicking them out. And you see this in churches even to this day to where you'll have a church that starts out like an Ephesus church or a Philadelphia church to where they just love everybody. They're bringing everybody they can and they're just dealing with all the problems. But as they start to grow and the problems get more and more, they stop forgiving. You know, Jesus says, you know, when he was asked, how many times do you forgive? He said 70 times seven. So 490 times. Most people, um, you know, in these uh, churches that start off loving people, they'll forgive you once or twice, and then they start kicking you out. Um, Pharisees, you, you can see that same behavior in the Pharisees where they started getting more and more legalistic, and, and they stopped loving people to where they were like, you know, um, a good example of the woman caught in adultery. Uh, what does it say in the law? Stone her to death. So rather yeah. than like, you know, you know, helping her through, um, you know, her sin, they wanted to adhere to the law to, to stone her to death. You know what I mean? So it's just like you see this strict legalism that is not loving God and loving your neighbor. So they were choosing, you know, one part of the law over another and not taking in consideration the heart of the Torah. We're no we're it's we are still under the law. People don't realize that. There's this replacement theology that when Jesus came, he replaced the law. No, he fulfilled the law. He showed us the heart of the law right. and how it applies to our lives. So absolutely you have the, right. Yeah, you have that faction of Jews that are blinded because they don't have that heart of the law. Yeah. And, and the problem is those Pharisees who were all about the law, you have to fulfill this and do this and do that. You, you got to check all these boxes because they didn't have a heart for, uh, for God. They, they only just wanted to check boxes. They didn't love God. Um, right. Demas was the one that, that kind of loved God and, and wanted to know more and actually came to Jesus and said, who are you? Because, because nobody could do what you do um, if they weren't from God. But they wanted to check boxes. They didn't have a heart for God. They didn't love God. And a lot of them were false. Now think about this. Um, John the Baptist, who is his father? His father was Zachariah. He was the high priest. Right. Who was the mm -hmm. rightful high priest at the time that Jesus was, was ministering? It would have been John the Baptist. Hmm. Was the high priest? Nope. As a matter of fact, the Pharisees went out to see him in the wilderness and they asked him, who are you? Now, they didn't ask him because they didn't know. They knew exactly who he was. They wanted to see if he knew who he was. At right. any time, John the Baptist could have waltzed right into town and said, out, Caiaphas, I'm the rightful yep. high priest. But he didn't. He fulfilled what, what he was brought there to do. So the cool thing is, well, the bad thing is, let's be honest, let's, I, I was going to jump ahead. Um, so the chosen people, the Jews being the chosen people, a lot of them missed it because they listened to the religious uh, priests or Pharisees instead of listening to Jesus. And there was a lot of, yeah. a lot of fear that the Pharisees stirred up to scare the people against Jesus. So here's the deal. We did not, Christians did not replace the Jews. Just like Watchful said, this is, this is a thing called replacement right. theology. And Christians did not replace the Jews. We are fulfilling our place and we are fulfilling their, their mandate. They were supposed to be uh, God's witnesses to the world. We are fulfilling that, that, uh, for them. And here's the deal. 
We are adopted in, the Bible tells us, and you can look up the word adopted or adoption mm -hmm. in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And there's only one place and it talks about the, the Gentiles or the Christians being adopted into the family. So we're adopted. Let, let me ask you this. If you had adopted children and natural children, would you be happy if your natural children hated your adopted children? No. no. Would you be happy if your adopted children hated your natural children? No. But you you would want them to love one another. And if your if your natural children were not able to fulfill uh, something for the family, would you want your adopted children to step up and help? You would. Yeah. So think of think of them that way. Okay. First first world problem. I'll say not not all Christians are adopted children. Some of us are the lost uh, bloodline of the children of Very Israel. Much. Good point. Good yeah. point. So anyway, I'll the, pop up. The, the, I wanted to throw that in. Yeah. So well, just I, one final one final cap on this is just like Christopher always says, salvation is a free gift to anybody who wants to believe. So whether you are Jew or Gentile, it doesn't matter. Anybody who wants to can be part of the family. Yeah. Yeah. So th this is a common issue that the church or organized religion really muddies and clouds uh, folks that are starting to believe and are interested in this. And this is what I adamantly, uh, I oppose this. It is simple. He died on the cross for everybody. There's no trick to this. Yeah. Repent. Ask him to come into your heart. The Holy Spirit will take over and do the rest. You don't have to worry about following rules and doing all that stuff because it will happen naturally once you have the holy spirit in you you will find yourself not wanting to do these other things that you used to struggle with and once you have christ in you and he's a part of your daily life everything will happen naturally just mm -hmm. repent and allow him to enter that's it don't let other people cloud the process it is that simple allow the holy spirit to work through you and everything will happen naturally. That is the key. That's the trick. Yeah, and I'm kind of wondering, um, First World, if you could just put in the comments, I'm kind of guessing you might be a little younger. Um, it's so funny because I have heard several, several, several times that um, it's the, the 25, 28 and under group that is being taught this within churches. And um, so I would just be curious to know maybe how old you are um, and if you are of that age group, because um, I have several friends who are freaking out and I've got friends all over the U.S. and and believe it or not, the U.K. <laughs> um, who are telling me this and they're like, hey, what do I do? <laughs> so so the, anyway, I'm just wondering. So, guys, I'm just going to reiterate this. If you're new and just like Kip was explaining, it's. It's a very simple process. Do not complicate this. Don't let the influencers and whatever place of worship you go to complicate this process. It is so simple. It is that simple. Just ask him to come into your heart. Believe that he died on the cross and allow the Holy Spirit to come in and repent. It will change you in all of these things that everybody says you can't do and will do and can't do and do this. It will all happen naturally. You will find yourself walking in the glory of Christ naturally. You won't have to try. You won't have to try to behave or obey or all of it. It will happen naturally. Mm -hmm. It's that simple. I, yeah, I, I believe that he is, a, he is a Christian. He says he's a new believer, but he just didn't understand. Yeah. He didn't understand why the Jews were chosen and others aren't. Well, and and that's not how it is. We're, we're all chosen, but just like Jesus fulfilled the, the law, we are fulfilling the um, mandate for our older brothers. And our older brothers basically are the Jews. And someday they are going to come back. Kind of like that. Yeah, kind of like the prodigal son. <laughs> the prodigal son of the Jews is going to come back. They're going to. I mean, that's why Christ died on the cross. That's right. Without his sacrifice, things wouldn't be this simple. And folks like myself wouldn't have that 
option. He died on the cross for all mankind. And it, it is really that simple. It's available for everybody. Don't let people tell you otherwise. It is that simple. That is Satan at work. He wants to prevent folks. Yeah. It is his mission in life. Go ahead, Watchful. I'm Jesus is not mad guys. at you. Mark, okay, thank you, Kip. Yeah, that was a much better explanation, a little bit more depth going back to the fallen angels to get a little bit more history on, on why the Jews are God's chosen people. Uh, appreciate her coming on. Uh, that led to some good conversations. Uh, Marco, De Nivel, I don't think Jesus is mad at you. Um, in, in, the, in Revelation, when he's talking to the seven churches, he tells uh, five of them that they have things to repent from. Um, that's about the extent of his, his, uh, anger towards people at the moment. He's, he's angry with the adversary. He's angry with the devil, not people. Um, you know, there's, he paid for all of our sins and we are still under the God of this world right now and suffering through the evil in this world. That doesn't mean that he's mad at people for falling victim to the God of this world. So and that's make sure true. You keep that straight brother. Yeah. I mean, and, and it's, it's so true. It, you know, studying these, um, that, that series of videos that I've mentioned several times, uh, and I call it the Know Your Enemy series, um, but that ex-Satanist of 25 years, he really outlines everything in such dire detail. It is so good because he starts and ends every video with letting folks know that the power is in Christ, that mm. everything that he talks about is subservient to the power of Christ. But he goes into such deep detail about how methodical and how deep Lucifer, Satan, has entrenched itself into everything. He, yeah. there, you know, There's men of God that, that claim to be God that are literally the, you know, the church of Satan working in disguise. It is their intentions to cloud the concept, when you hear of all these complicated processes or someone tells you, hey, you got to do this, this, and that, you don't truly know if you are saved unless this, this, and that. That is Satan literally working through them. It's, it's very simple. It's not complicated. That's just how, G I mean, you can just go back and read what Jesus said. It's all about love. In the fruit of the Spirit, you'll be able to tell instantly who you're dealing with just based off their fruit. And, yeah. and once you understand this and you allow the Holy Spirit to really come in and take over and you walk your life daily with Christ, this will become more and more clear. If you're new and this is something that you're learning, I promise you it's, it's really, really simple. Just be patient and learn. Allow Christ to come in. And the Holy Spirit will start to transform you. And the things that you worry about, you will naturally not do them anymore. I've seen it from my own eyes. Because I used to worry about things. I was like, well, what if I do this again? Or what if I do that? Or this? Or that? Or this? Or that? It just happens naturally. And we're all sinners. Just repent for your sins. It's not. You know, I'm not saying that you're never going to mess up. We all do. We're, we're, we're sinners. There was only one perfect man that walked the earth, and he died on the cross for all of us. Yeah, and the, and the example and answer he gave for us is to love God and love your neighbor. So if you want to know what to do in every situation, that's, those are his commandments. All the commandments fall under uh, love God and love your neighbor, and that's the example that he set for us. So if you're ever in doubt for what to do, that's your answer. It really uh, is know, that yeah. simple, guys. Have, your, have that covenant with Yeshua and love God and love your neighbor. Yes, indeed. So, All right, do, we have, do we have any more news or should we get into some of the other stuff we talked about today? Uh, I'm drawing a blank now. I went on a rant and ended up yeah. clearing my head. <laughs> well, we went from uh, eclipses and solar flares to Jew and Gentile. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I literally had a plan, um, and now I've totally drawn a blank because I got all. 
<laughs> we we can go into what you were going to talk about because that what you were talking about earlier really uh, was very very interesting. Um, I thought yeah, it was so I had this weird epiphany, but before I tell you what it is, I want to kind of look at some scripture because I'm going to put this out for you guys to to research. Um, I'm going to grab coffee because, while you do that. Let me just cut to your screen. Yeah, cut to my share here so I can share some scripture. Just let me know when you're ready. Right now. All right. So, you know, we're talking a lot about where we are in the timeline of events, right? So we're looking at this uh, eclipse, the eclipse today. So we're at Purim now. Um, we've got these solar flares that are hitting our planet. They're going to have an effect. They're having an effect on your health, on radio frequencies, and very likely the weather and earthquakes. And we have this big eclipse that's coming up on April 8th, which is, you know, there be, it's called the X on the United States. Uh, it's the one going through multiple Salem's, uh, multiple Nineveh's. You know, there's a lot of potential significance associated with this eclipse. And then also add on to that, we have the sacrifice of the red heifers, which is coming up on April 22nd through the 30th. And that's where I have my attention right now. And, and the reason is, is because I'm personally speculating that April 28th, uh, which on the Jewish calendar is the festival of first fruits, just so happens to fall in that week that they're doing the sacrifice of the heifers and the cleansing for the of the people and preparing for the temple that april 28th just happens to be one the primary candidate for the start of 1260 days because if you add 1260 days to the festival of first fruits, it lands on the day of atonement in October of 2027. Um, so I'm personally looking to that for when we see the revealing of the two witnesses or the two witnesses, um, receiving their power and authority. So either, you know, we're going to finally find out who they are. That's ultimately the, 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 what I'm looking for is we'll likely see who they are. And what's interesting, so today I was thinking, I wonder if the sacrifice of the red heifers isn't the abomination of desolation. So, and I haven't done a thorough study on this. It was just, and it was just a thought based on where we are in the timeline. Now, Hamas publicly came out and said that the reason why they did what they did on October 7th was because Israel transported those red heifers from Texas to Israel. And given the fact that they're now planning to do the cleansing ceremony, which requires that they sacrifice those red heifers, given where it is in the timeline, I was wondering, I wonder if this could potentially be the abomination. So that's where we are here. So there's three records in the Gospels that I want to point out, and then quickly we'll look at um, the scriptures in the Old Testament that we believe this is referring to and talk a little bit about it. So let's just start here in Matthew 24, verse 15. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, whoever reads, let him understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let him who is on the housetop not go down to take anything out of his house and let him who is in the field not go back to get his clothes. But woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babies in those days. And pray that your flight may not be in winter or on the Sabbath, for then there will be great tribulation, such as, not, such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no nor ever shall be and unless those days were shortened no flesh would be saved but for the elect's sakes those days will be shortened so we've been speculating that we're coming up to a period of time and just seeing the events that are happening in the world that we could potentially be going into the great tribulation you know given the criminal aliens that are coming into all the countries around the world given the um, collapse of many um, you know, governmental bodies and offices of authority, 
um, given the conflicts that are going on in the world that are starting to look like, you know, the Gog and Magog war, just suffice it to say, there's a lot of spiritual events that seem to be happening. We look, it looks like we're smack in the middle of the book of Revelation. And a lot of that is confirmed with signs in the heavens, which we've got receipts on that too. Go watch our video, our playlist on the signs, uh, the seals, but I don't want to get into that today. So it looks like the abomination of desolation happens right before the great tribulation. So let's look at the other record here. It's very similar. That's in Mark 13 and in 14. <clears throat> this is a, a parallel record. And and stick around for this until we get to the third one, because that's the kind of the whammy here. So in Mark 13, 14, so when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing where it ought not, now, a lot of people say the abomination of desolation takes place in the temple. Um, I want you to pay attention here that the temple is never mentioned. Uh, so in Matthew, it said standing in the holy place, right? doesn't say temple. This is going to be important. So standing in the holy temple. And then in Mark 13, it says standing where it ought not. Let the reader understand. Then, though, then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let him who is on the housetop not go into the house, nor enter to take anything out of his house. And let him who is in the field not go back to get his clothes. Again, you see this is very similar to Matthew 24. But woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babies in those days. And pray that your flight may not be in winter. For in those days there will be tribulation. Such has not been since the beginning of creation, which God created until this time, nor ever shall be. Suffice it to say, great tribulation. The word great's not here, but it was in Matthew. The key here is, though, is that this tribulation is, is worse than it's ever been and ever will be. And unless the Lord had shortened those days, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, whom he chose, he shortened the days. So... And then here's here's the whammy. Here's the one that really got my attention here. In Luke 21, and in verse 20, this is the parallel. Listen to how it's worded here. But when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, right now they are surrounded by armies. Then know that its desolation is near. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains, let those who are in the midst of her depart, and let not those who are in the country enter her. For these are the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babies in those days, for there will be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people. And they will fall by the edge of the sword and be led away captive into all nations, and Jerusalem will be trampled by Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles are fulfilled. This is the parallel record for the first two that we read. I know a lot of people will argue that um, you have to look at to who these books are uh, addressed to, and they'll try and say that, you know, Matthew is addressed to only the Jews and that this, and that Luke is addressed to, uh, you know, us in this day, they're parallel records. I mean, you can see the the consistency here with you know, but those who are pregnant and those who are nursing babies in those days, for there will be great distress in the land. This one just gives different details about the same period of time. I don't think that this is a different group of people. I believe that this is just additional information. So we have Jerusalem surrounded by armies. We have the abomination of desolation. Um, let's go look at the records in the Old Testament that probably are the prophecy in Daniel that this is referring to. So we'll, there's three of them. <coughs> we'll start in Daniel nine. We're not going to read this whole thing. Um, I encourage you in your own time to go study this because it's well worth it, but we're going to go skip down to Daniel nine 27. Uh, we'll start in, we'll start in 27, but then we're going to come back and read 25 through 27. So then shall he confirm a covenant with many for one week. But in the middle of the week, he shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering. And on the wings of abomination shall be one who makes desolate, even until the consummation, which is determined, is poured out on the desolate. So this is, this is where many get that uh, the seven-year period, the seven-year tribulation. 
And then three and a half years into that tribulation, um, and there's an end of sacrifice. So I bring this up because of the red heifers. Now I will point out, and the reason I pointed out the fact that it didn't say temple is because right now there is no temple. We are currently the temple here. I'll show you what I mean by that. So if we go to 1 Corinthians 3.16, 3.16, and probably 17. Oops. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and the spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him for the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. We are the temple of God right now. Now, th they are doing the sacrifice of the heifers in order to build a temple. But for now, the temple doesn't exist. That's why I say it's really important that you pay attention to what's written because in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the word temple is not used. The word holy place is what's used. So, uh, so where they're doing, and we'll post this video, actually, um, maybe I'll play this video at the end here if anybody wants to see it, but we can post it in the community. It's about 15 minutes, and it goes into detail about what's gonna happen um, and what the plan is in Israel. <clears throat> but uh, I lost my train of thought. Right. We are the temple of God right now. <laughs> you distracted me when you came in and changed the screen. I didn't mean to. There's a key on my keyboard. If I accidentally hit it when I'm typing, it switches screens. I was like, uh-oh, oh, didn't cool. mean to do that. Do you have anything you wanted to comment on before I go through these three records on the desolation? No, it's it, it, when you mentioned it to me earlier, I was like, that is pretty interesting. And yeah, it's, um, it's very interesting. And someone made a comment also that I noticed that Israel joined the cop 28, uh, bilateral, uh, agreement for ending fossil fuels. I'm not sure how huh. that fits into the end of times narrative, but the one heading up that COP28 agreement is King Charles. Interesting. Wow. Yeah, that's definitely interesting and worth paying attention to. All right. Well, if you have no more comments, let's just, let's keep going through these records on the desolation. So then he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week, but in the middle of the week, he shall bring an end to sacrifice. Now, what's interesting about this is that we all know what a week is. It's seven days, right? Well, a week of years is also called a week. So like when you have seven years, that's also called a week or can be called a week. So because of the days given in, in Daniel, as well as the book of Revelation, 42 months, 1,260 days, those conveniently equal half of seven years. So 1,260 days is three and a half years. Three and a half times two is seven. Uh, so this is really interesting to pay attention to. So then he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. So it's interesting that we have this, this sacrifice taking place precisely during the week that there's a festival that fits a 1,260 day period of time. I'm not saying it is for sure. I'm just saying, you know, this is very interesting data that we should be paying attention to. So, and it's also interesting that this is <clears throat> the ceremony that they need to build the third temple because it seems to indicate that they will start sacrifices again. And you have this, but in the middle of the week, he will bring an end to sacrifice and offering. So are we looking at the beginning of sacrifice and offering to continue for three and a half years to come to an end in October of 2027? So he shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering and on the wing of abomination shall be one who makes desolate even unto the consummation, which is determined is poured out on the desolate. Okay, so that's the first record uh, about the uh, potentially abomination of desolation. Here's the next one. It's in Daniel 11. 
Yeah, 11, I think like 40, or is it 31? Now when they fill this, I... Is it 40? I can't remember if it's 31 or 41. Must be 31. All right, so let's start in 29. At the appointed time, he shall return and go towards the south. But it shall not be like the former. So this is talking about wars. But it shall not, not be like the former or the latter, for ships from Cyprus shall come against him. Therefore he shall be grieved and return in rage against the Holy Covenant and do damage. So he shall return and show regard to those who forsake the Holy Covenant, and forces shall be mustered by him, and they shall defile the sanctuary fortress. Then they shall take away the daily sacrifices and place there the abomination of desolation. Those who do wickedly against the covenant, he shall corrupt with flattery, but the people who know their God shall be strong and carry out great exploits. And those of the people who understand shall instruct many. Yet for many days they shall fall by the sword and flame, by captivity and plundering. Now when they fall, they shall be aided with a little help, but many shall join them with intrigue. And some of those of understanding shall fall to refine them, purify them, and make them white until the time of the end, because it is for the appointed time. Now, there are some who say that this is specifically referring to Antiochus and the Rome when Rome destroyed the second temple. So Jesus said when he was standing in front of the temple and um, he said that, you know, this will be destroyed and there won't be one stone left upon another. He was referring to the people speculate that this prophecy is, is referring to that when Antiochus um, destroyed the temple. He went into the temple. Well, this was before he destroyed the temple. He went into the temple and set up an altar and sacrificed pigs. Now, this is backed up in uh, in Scripture, so in the Apocrypha, in First and Second Maccabees. Um, the Jewish historian Josephus also talks about when um, Antiochus did this. And there's also some pagan history that has rest rest um, recorded this period of time. What's interesting about this one, though, is it talks about appointed times. And when you read this, there does seem to be some parallels with what's happening with the, you know, the scripture that we read in Matthew 24. Now, when they fall, they shall be aided with little help, but shall be joined with little intrigue. And some of them anyway, to refine them, purify them and make them white until the time of the end. Um, and if you read this, if you read after this, it does seem to indicate that this is for the end times. Now, it's possible that there could be a dual fulfillment of this, um, which is very common in the scripture. In the same way that the seven churches, in order for us to have the attributes of the seven churches, those churches had to exist. It's entirely possible that Antiochus going into the temple and, and setting up the altar and sacrificing you know, unclean animals could be a foreshadow of the abomination of desolation. So keep that in mind. Now I want to read the next one, which is in Daniel 12. And again, I'm just giving you a quick overview of this because I had this weird epiphany today and kind of want to get other people's researching this to see if there's any validity to this, if not just paying attention to it when it happens to see what happens, you know, because a big part of this is we're literally living in these end days. A lot of it is just observation because so much of what we've been guessing at for years we're watching unfold before our eyes. So just to kind of, you know, consider this, that maybe that, you know, we're looking at the beginning of that 1,260 days and potentially, you know, with Jerusalem being surrounded with armies, potentially the abomination of desolation might be, there might be a different perspective on that. Okay. So uh, where is it? It's in Daniel 12, 11. And from the time that the daily sacrifice is taken away and the abomination of desolation is set up, there shall be 1,290 days. Blessed is he who waits and comes to the 1,335 days. But you go your way till the end, for you shall rest and will arise to your inheritance at the end of days. So that's Daniel. So those are the three records that are often associated with 
uh, the record in Matthew, Mark, and Luke in regards, well, Matthew and Mark specifically in regards to the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet. So those are the three sections that Daniel the prophet talks about the abomination of desolation. Um, I'm putting that out there for you guys to consider, and I'm wondering if there isn't potentially something to um, these red heifers. Is it possible that the abomination of desolation, so an abomination is something that's detestable, right? That is hated or detestable. You know, it's an abomination. Uh, desolation is destruction. So you have this something that's detestable that leads to destruction. Now, given what Hamas publicly said the, for the reason why they went in on October 7th, imagine how detestable the actual sacrifice of these animals is going to be to them. It seems like it's an abomination to their way of thinking. Is it possible that's what's going to lead to the desolation? Is that when we have the beginning of the Great Tribulation? Because it just so happens to fall right in that seven-day window when there's the Festival of First Fruits on April 28th that is one of the potential candidates for the start of 1,260 days. And it's interesting in here that you have, in Daniel 12, 11, you have a day count of 1,290 days, which I bring that up because Dr. Uh, Thrapp has often said that there's 40 day windows around these festivals. And he's, he's looking at October 2nd, but he's, he's often made the comment that it could be, you know, 20 to 40 days within that period of time. Wouldn't it be interesting if the 1,200, if, if, if the 1,260 days and the 1,290 days doesn't start here at the end of April? You have any thoughts on that, Christopher? Are you still there? Yeah, I'm here. No, I, it's, I mean, it, this is a very interesting concept, but you may be onto something. Um, I, I like to really think about and process stuff before I open my mouth, but um, yeah. I'm going to really uh, think about this because you may be onto something. I, I'm going to read scripture and compare, but you may be on to something because the Bible really doesn't say point blank that the temple is a building that's going to be rebuilt. It, it kind of points to that, but what right. it does say point blank is that we are the temple of God. So yep. you may be on to something, even though there's a lot of idioms that direct to the concept of them rebuilding the temple. It doesn't yep. directly say that. And I'm one of these guys that takes the Bible literally. And what it literally does say is that we are the temple of God. So yep. you, you, you may be onto something. I need to really. Well, um, yeah. And the, and the abomination. Well, so people often insert the words that the abomination of desolation stands in the temple. They're inserting the word temple there, but it doesn't say temple. It says in the holy place which the video that we're going to, um, you know, hmm. post out to the community, um, it gives, it shows you the illustrations of where the temple is going to be built and where they're going to actually do. It's on the Mount of Olives, um, yeah. where they're actually they going to do the, the sacrifice. Land. They bought yeah, the land. It's literally, a, it's literally a holy place. So yeah, and that, is the that other the temple, abomination of desolation? Yeah. I mean, you could be very right. Cause the other temple you can see, uh, the other temple from the property that they have bought. And it, it, you, you know, it, you're right. It doesn't have to be a physical structure. It just has to be the holy place. If that is uh, my understanding of it. So yeah, you very well could be onto something because again, I take the Bible literal. I don't try to retranslate. Uh, I, I take what it says and I believe what it says and I, I take it seriously. So, and this is a perfect case of understanding what scripture says. And it says literally everything you just said. So I, yeah. I got nothing that I can uh, refute. So you may be onto can, something. Let me see if I can find that illustration in this video. Cause I want to show you guys. 
<clears throat> so you can see where it is that they're planning to actually Here, do. Let me go back to your screen. Well, okay. oh yeah, I've watched that video. Let's just watch that. That's a good video. Is that a long video? Yeah, it's thirteen. It's thirteen minutes long. We could watch it if uh, you want. Well, guys, how do you guys feel? It. He's got a video that's that's pretty interesting. I've seen it. Um, it's not terribly long. It's actually pretty, pretty interesting. If you guys want him to play it, we can queue up the screen. And uh, But I, I'd like everybody just to give a chime in real quick. If you want us to just keep talking, we can keep talking. Or if you want to see what he's referencing, we can take a few minutes and cut to this video. So... Folks, just uh, chime in. Otherwise, I'm just going to switch to the screen and he's going to play it. I just want to make sure everybody else is good with it. Do, do, show it. Let's watch it. All right. All right. Let's, let's watch it unless someone else objects verbally. Yep. Let's see. All right. It. Let's cool. see it. All right. So before I play the whole video, I want to point out here, <clears throat> this is what I was talking about. So this is the temple. This is where the Dome of the Rock currently is. So this is an illustration of where they're planning on building the temple. And then you have the Kidron Valley, and then you have a bridge here. This circled area is where they're, go where they're setting up to do the sacrifice. This is a holy place. So this is, um, and, and they have to do it at the entrance of the temple because they're supposed to use the ashes in order to cleanse the entrance to the temple. So let's and go the, and watch this. The Dome of the Rock should be visible from there too. Um, yeah, because well, in this video, in the... yeah, okay. Yeah, you'll see it in the video. Fire away. October 7, 2023 will forever be a day of great tragedy in Israel. Since the Holocaust, there hasn't been a tragedy that great in Israel. Hamas attack was devastating for Israel, destroying entire communities, killing at least 1400 Jewish people and kidnapping many innocent men, women, and children. But there is also another story behind these horrible events that not a lot of people are aware yeah, of. That's the priest with the uh, magnifying glass to look for the hairs on the October peppers. 7 happened as a reaction to what was happening and what is happening around the Temple Mount. 100 days after Hamas attack on Israel, Abu Obeida, the military spokesman for the Hamas Al-Qassam brigades, gave a television speech about the Hamas efforts, as well as reminded of the purposes of the war. Yep. In his speech, he says that the attack was to defend the Temple Mount, the Al-Aqsa Mosque, and the Dome of the Rock from the Jewish plans of sacrificing the red heifer. Oh, remind me to in September go to Revelation 2022, this. the perfect red heifers were imported from Texas to Israel. As of now, the red heifers are blemish free and are being prepared for a sacrifice that will change the status of the Temple Mount. A special altar is already built and the Temple Institute plans to perform the sacrifice of the red heifer before this upcoming Passover. And why is this That's important? April 22nd through the because 30th. Because it can trigger the events that will lead up to the building of the third temple in Jerusalem. Before I continue, I would kindly ask you to subscribe to the channel, like this video, and subscribe to our channel too if you haven't already, and share this video with your friends because it's very important that people know about what is happening. Yeah. With that we'll out we'll of post the way, this video in the community let's begin and in the description about the first temple. <laughs> Excuse me. To understand what is happening, we have to go back to the Old Testament and the ceremony of sacrificing the red heifer. In the book of Numbers, chapter 19, we read, And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, This is the ordinance of the law which the Lord hath commanded, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they bring thee a red heifer without spot, wherein is no blemish, and upon which never came yoke. And ye shall give her unto Eleazar the priest, that he may bring her forth without the camp, and one shall slay her before his face. 
and Eliezer the priest shall take of her blood with his finger and sprinkle of her blood directly before the tabernacle of the congregation seven times. And one shall burn the heifer in his sight, her skin and her flesh and her blood with her dung shall he burn. And the priest shall take cedar wood and hyssop and scarlet and cast it into the midst of the burning of the heifer. And for an unclean person they shall take of the ashes of the burnt heifer of purification for sin, and running water shall be put thereto in a vessel. And a clean person shall take hyssop and dip it in the water and sprinkle it upon the tent and upon all the vessels and upon the persons that were there and upon him that touched a bone or one slain or one dead or a grave. According to the rabbi and philosopher Maimonides, nine red heifers have been sacrificed since the time of Moses. The last time such See right a here ceremony is an illustration of where they're going to do that sacrifice. Before the second temple was destroyed by the Romans on the Mount of Olives opposite to the Temple Mount. According to Maimonides, when the tenth red heifer will be sacrificed, uh, it looks like you changed screens, Christopher. We're looking at your widescreen. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what happened. <laughs> <laughs> um, I stupid, stupid software. It, it, <laughs> it. Um, bear with me. Technical issues. All right. I accidentally dis uh, deleted your screen. New screen share overlay. <laughs> oh. Sorry. Um, Rewind uh, the video a little bit. It's probably yeah. good that we interrupt these videos anyway, because they, uh, you, YouTube doesn't like you just outright playing videos without commenting on them and stuff. That's why you'll hear me making comments and stuff and breaking them up, so we don't get dinged. Yeah. I'm sorry if you hear me coughing. If I mute my my chant, if I mute my input then you won't hear the video so i have to like try and be subtle i'm at the tail end of a cough here so I'm trying not to cough in the microphone sorry guys i there's there's shortcuts on this um software and for some reason if i if i hit the wrong key while typing in the chat it does something <laughs> uh, apparently sorry. deletes everything I'm an idiot. Please uh, forgive me. All right. You're um, ready you're ready to rock. All right. Here we go. Before the second temple was destroyed by the Romans on the Mount of Olives opposite to the Temple Mount. According to Maimonides, when the tenth red heifer will be sacrificed, we will enter a messianic age. Now, you may not take it seriously what I'm saying, but the Temple Institute is actively preparing for this monumental event on the Mount of Olives. And there is a reason why the Temple Institute wants to perform the sacrifice of the red heifer on the Mount of Olives. You see, during the second temple times, the red heifers had to be sacrificed away from the temple. The Kidron Valley that separated the Temple Mount from the Mount of Olives. And this is what I was talking about, the holy place. Buffer zone between the clean and unclean. Now, what is very important to understand is that the ashes of the red heifer mixed with the pure water were used to clean the priests, the temple, and the temple instruments. Of course, today, on the spot where the temple was located, we have the Dome of the Rock and the Al-Aqsa Mosque. And this is a big problem for the Jewish people today, because you can enter the Temple Mount, but you are not ceremonially clean, and you must be careful where you step, because the territory of the Temple Mount is the most holy place for the Jewish people. And there were some parts of the Temple Mount that only the high priest could enter. And this is why the ashes of the red heifer are so crucial in the development, in the building of the next temple. And once the ashes of the red heifer are used to cleanse the Temple Mount, 
the construction of the temple will begin. I mean, this is some serious stuff we are talking about. And as we look yes. at the topography of yep. Jerusalem, we can see that the Mount of Olives is higher than the Temple Mount. And so the priest that would be performing a sacrifice on the Mount of Olives would see the court of the temple. That's a trip. And the Temple Institute already has a spot selected on the Mount of Olives where the sacrifice of the red heifer before this year's Passover will take place. So it looks like this Passover will be something very different from what we have known in the past. And the tension is growing. This looks to me Institute like the fulfillment of the Gentiles, the time of the Gentiles coming to an end. That this Passover, I think you may be right. The red heifer sacrifice may happen. And we shouldn't be surprised that at this moment, when this is all happening, when all the pieces come together, the tensions between the Arab people and the Jewish people are ultra high. Guys, we are living... Interesting. Look at the colors. On... I'm going to rewind that just something a little bit. That many genera- I want to point something out about those it's, colors. We oh, yeah, that's living. the colors of the Antichrist and the Four Horsemen. Those are the colors of the four horsemen. You have the white horse, the red horse, the black horse, and the green horse. I don't think that's yeah. a coincidence. Between oh, the for Arab sure. And the Jewish people are ultra high. Guys, we are living in incredible times. Something it is incredible. That many generations yeah. could not witness. It's an understatement. <laughs> we are seeing the resurrection of the nation of Israel where God gathered the Jewish people from all over the earth. And now there are only the final chapters of the scripture that need to be fulfilled. We saw the birth pains of Israel, but after the pain comes great joy and relief. Yeah. There you go. Today, building the third temple seems possible. But it wasn't always like this. Meet Mr. Yehuda Glick. Today, um, a very we pro- influential. Do you guys want to hear the history about the guy who's been? So there's the, the rest of this is not is uh, about <clears throat> how a lot of this is coming coming to pass. Do you guys want to? Do we want to cut it here, or do you want to listen to the rest of the video? Let's see what they say, man. Um, that is really interesting. I'll be uh, I'll be frank with you. I'm surprised. Um, Israel hasn't blown up that dome and just <laughs> yeah, and just taking the. I mean, I I have to tip my hat to them for their restraint. Um, right. Uh, I won't comment what I would have done, but um, I, they uh, they well, they may dismantle them. it. I mean, come. I mean, that might. I mean, like cons- consider what they're doing with. I mean, just transporting those red heifers from Texas to Israel that they're they're Hamas is claiming that's the reason they did what they did on October 7th. Imagine yeah. what they do if they start to dismantle the um the, the Alo- what is it the uh, the dome, the Aloxa cuz cuz they called the October 7th of the Aloxa flood. And yeah. I wanted to um read Revelation 12 um because of that. So in Revelation this is um where we get the signs that happened in the in the heavens. Uh, do you want to read that? Uh, you can go ahead. I got to find it first. Yeah. So Revelation 12. Now a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet and on her head, a, a garland of 12 stars. Then being with child, she cried out in labor and in pain to give birth. Now, one of our um, one of our viewers had pointed out uh, that on October 7th, there was an, uh, a, an, a meteor or an asteroid called Child that was come that was looked like it was being born from Virgo. That's probably the first meteor that I've seen associated with any events that seems prophetic. So I, I thought that was really interesting. I'll post a link to that video um, in the description. So we'll, we'll put a, a link to the video that we watched tonight. And I'll also point, uh, put a link to the, uh, his, to his video. It's a short 
about uh, the asteroid named Child, I dismissed it because all asteroids that aren't given a name are called Child. But it's really interesting that there is one that that uh, was in Virgo on on October seventh when this happened. Anyway, after after you're done 12, reading, after you're done reading, I think they want to hear the rest. So oh, okay, go cool. ahead. Yep. So let's continue. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great fiery red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems on his head. His tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth to devour her child as soon as it was born. She bore a male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up to God and his throne. A woman fled into the wilderness where she has a place prepared by God that they should feed her there 1,260 days. Here's that connection to April 28th, because that happens to be the same period of time that the two witnesses uh, give their prophecy for 1,260 days. And continuing in seven, and war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Then I heard a voice in heaven, Now salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren, who accused them before our God day and night, has been cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to the death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and to the sea, for the devil has come down to you, having great wrath, because he knows that he has a short time. Now this is the point part I wanted to point out that seems associated with the, um, the, ox, the what's it called, the Oxana Flood? Uh, Aloxa, uh, the Aloxa there flood. There you go. Aloxana flood. Anyway, you know what I'm referring to. Now, yep. when the dragon saw that he had been cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. But the woman was given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness to her place where she is nourished for a time, times, and a half a times from the presence of the serpent. So the serpent spewed water out of his mouth like a flood after the woman. They literally called October 7th the Oxana Flood. Hmm. That he might cause her to be carried away by the flood. But the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. And the dragon was enraged with the woman, and he went to make war with the rest of her offspring, who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. A lot of correlations there. Hey, let's finish that. I think they're interested in it. Okay. Um, there we go. ...on the Jewish presence on the Temple Mount. Glick quickly became controversial and popular for his advocacy for Jewish rights to the Temple Mount. Each year, Glick was bringing more and more Jewish people to the Temple Mount. His popularity and activity disturbed the Arab population that just hated the man. And then on October 29, 2014, as Glick was giving a speech at the Menachem Begin Heritage Center, he was shot by a Palestinian. Glick survived the attack and was rescued by the Israeli medics, and he only continued his mission. Since then, his influence only grew, and in 2016, he joined the Knesset for the Likud party. Being part of the ruling body in Israel, Glick has elevated the issue of the Jewish temple to another level. Since 2016, Glick was able to receive support for his cause from prominent Jewish leaders. Here you will be able to hear an interview where Glick talks about the progress of this issue in Israel. Fringe, zealots, lunatics, peculiar. Today it's mainstream. One of those members is Yehuda Glick. Ten years ago, there was not a single member of Knesset who attended Temple Mount. Today, we have 20 of the Knesset members who are interested in attending Temple Mount, praying on the Temple Mount, and are part 
in the battle for the redemption of the Temple Mount and for bringing the Temple Mount back into the center of the next, next step in the redemption process. And what is this next step in the redemption process? Is the sacrifice of the red heifer on the Mount of Olives. This will open the gates to the Temple Mount for the Jewish people. And then the temple can be built. The Temple Institute is actively preparing for this very moment. They are training the future priests that will serve in the future temple. The priests are already performing sacrifices every year and training for the very important sacrifice that may happen this Passover. They also have all the equipment needed to serve in the temple ready. How far are we from building the temple? Well, if you go to the website thirdtemple.org, you will see that there are actual plans of building this temple. This organization called the Third Temple has already architects that created the plans for building the Third Temple in Jerusalem. The purpose of this temple would be to facilitate all religions of the world in this one place in Jerusalem. So an universal religion that would gather all people. This new structure, according to what they say on the website, would facilitate global peace in the world. <laughs> Interesting. And the whole world would be redeemed by this new structure. Of course, the reality we see today is quite different. There is a coalition growing against Israel. Yeah, look at the United Israel is surrounded by armies are constantly there. Constantly criticizing Israel for her operation in Gaza. Even Russia is now against Israel as Israel announced that it will help Ukraine in their defense against Russia. So God, are we God getting closer to the final conflict, the so-called Armageddon? Well, I can tell you that we have never been closer. But the good news is that at the end of this road, there will be true redemption of the world. Amen. This is our hope. Look up your redemption. Thank you so much for nine. your attention. I hope you were able to learn something new in this episode. I hope it was helpful for you. Please remember to subscribe to the channel, give a like to this video, share it with your. I wonder if we should watch that <coughs> short video that I shared earlier about Admiral Bird. Yeah, we could. People want to hear. Oh, that. that that's a really really good video because we're we're due for another segment. <laughs> we're trying we're trying to break these up into segments guys well um what's our next segment called i don't know uh where's well, it can be about this video yeah we Let's can do can uh a segment on this video and comment you know there's a lot of youtubers that <laughs> do that oh yeah i didn't, like I didn't real realize how many people did that oh yeah it's a thing i mean people even will just Mr. Tatum does that where he, um, sorry, where he, uh, he just, uh, responds to things. He'll watch videos and he'll respond. That's a big thing. Here we go. Oh, this one's, this one's 20 minutes. Well, um, wait, it, they'll let us know if they want us to stop it. All right. You guys want to do a 20 minute video? share a different tab um, there you go you see that all right let me know if you can uh if you don't hear this well it's muted <laughs> let me unmute it that's elf that's an elf antenna you know what that's for ostensibly <coughs> It's for this. Send frequencies into your head and you wonder why? Why is it that I, I'm thirsty or why would I like to have an ice cream? Or what? You know, all of a sudden this desire hits you. It's because they're feeding this stuff into your brain. Now you say, well, now that's crazy preacher. You know, that they wouldn't do that. Reminds me of um, <clears throat> the government wouldn't do that. Who did, who did we would just they? have on? Uh, L.A. Marzulli who was saying that aliens could abduct us in our dreams. Yeah, using 5G.
Yeah. Hey, click past his intro. Oh. I read something last night. You didn't do a long intro on this one. There you go. Yeah. This is fascinating. I read something last night. As I've been digging, I've been doing a lot of digging. One thing leads to another. Mm. Have you ever noticed how when you get on the trail, one thing leads to another. And uh, I'm, when I started reading this, it's one of these things in your life, when you read it, it uh, you'll never forget it. All right? I'll never forget this. I'll never forget it because of the implications involved in it. First of all, it's the testimony of an honorable man. Admiral, he's an admiral. He's gone on now, but admiral. Uh, uh, Bird, Richard Bird. Here's the man who flew over the North Pole and was awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor. And I read the, the uh, statement uh, attached to that, how that he risked his life and so forth. He flew over the South Pole. And there's, there's a lot That's of corresponding did, evidence to prove war, that this happened. After the war, he led a expedition oh, for sure. with over 4,000 troops and eight, nine, 10, 12 warships. He was an admiral. And of Operation High Jump. Never heard of it. He's not going to make this. But when you find out about one thing, it leads to another thing. Well, let's get into it quickly because you're wondering what's going on. The man's an aviator. He's a pilot. And uh, he leaves at 0600 hours. That's six o'clock in the morning for folks that, you know, if you're not familiar with the 24-hour clock, 0600 is six o'clock in the morning. He, he flies out and he's headed, uh, he headed north. He gives his, he gives updates as to his flight, to turbulence that he gets in the air, he drops his altitude, raises his altitude, standard procedures of any pilot. And uh, he does this, and he talks about how he does it, and uh, he continues to fly. He has, uh, he has constant radio checks with his base, so they'll know where he is, they can keep up with him. And uh, back in those days, they didn't have GPS and all of that stuff, so uh, they flew by what's called dead reckoning a lot of times. And pilots know exactly what I'm talking about when I'm talking about dead reckoning. At, uh, at, uh, he continues to, he continues to talk to them until he gets down until he, until he comes, he's flying over the ice. He's flying over the North pole. And what do you expect to see? Con nothing but ice. That's what you expect to see. One sheet of ice after another sheet, just solid white ice, snow, the North pole until, uh, he, uh, he sees a creature down below, which looks to him like a mammoth. And he drops his altitude to about 1400 feet. And it is a mammoth. And uh, uh, this begins to really get his attention. Uh, he sees a mountain range. Our guest, Ben and from Suspicious Observers, in, uh, talked about this when he was on the show. He's been in the air for four hours. <clears throat> he says he crosses over the small mountain range and still proceeding northward as best can be ascertained beyond the mountain range is what appears to be a valley with a small river or stream running through the center portion. There should be no green valley below, no green valley in, North, in, 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 Arctic, in the Arctic, no green valley. And uh, right. something is definitely wrong and abnormal here, he says. We should be over ice and snow. <laughs> to the port side, port is left, starboard is right. To the port side are great forests growing on the mountain slopes. Our navigator our navigation in instruments are still spinning. And the reason they're spinning is because he's approaching magnetic north. And if you, and the magnetic pole, if you ever get around the magnetic mm -hmm. pole, you, you forget your, 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 the your North pole is compass. really interesting work because the magnetism is so intense in regards to and, our video and, and, and the on the seven so seals that, you, that it's, it's no use to you. But in any event, cause it's surrounded by says, a green uh, rainbow. His, uh, his navigational instruments are spinning. The gyroscope is oscillating back and forth. Then he sees this beneath and he says at 1400 feet and I execute a sharp left turn to better examine the valley below. It is green with either moss or some type of tight knit grass. The light here seems different. I cannot see the sun anymore. We make another left turn and we spot what seems to be a large animal of some kind below. It appears to be an elephant. No, it looks more like a mammoth. This is incredible. He says yet there it is. He decreases his altitude to a thousand feet and take, can he takes binoculars to better examine the animal. It is confirmed. It is definitely a mammoth like animal. Report this to base camp. Though 10, uh, 1030 hours, he encountered more rolling green hills. The external temperature indicator reads 74 degrees Fahrenheit. He's in the North pole. Continuing on our heading now, navigation instruments seem normal now. I'm puzzled over their actions. Attempt to contact base camp. Radio is not functioning. 
And now what follows is one of the most incredible things I've ever read in my life. And let me put it in the context of this. When Satan showed the Lord Jesus Christ the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time, he did just that. He has power. And uh, there are things going on that there is absolutely no physical definition or logical reasoning to, but the existence of it cannot be denied. That's right. And this is what's happening here. In 1130 hours, countryside below is more level than normal. If I may use that word ahead, we spot what seems to be a city. This is impossible. Hmm. Aircraft seems light and oddly buoyant. The controls refuse to respond. My God, he says, off our port and starboard wings, a strange type of aircraft. They're closing rapidly alongside. They're disc shaped and have a radiant quality to them. They are close enough now to see the markings on them. It is a type of swastika. This is fantastic. Where are we? What has happened? I tug at the controls again. They will not respond. We're caught in an invisible vice grip of some type. 11.35 hours, our radio crackles and a voice comes through in, uh, in what appears to, in English with what appears to be a slight Nordic or Germanic accent. The, the message is, welcome, Admiral, to our domain. We shall land you in exactly seven minutes. Relax, Admiral. You are in good hands. Hmm. I note the engines of our plane have stopped running. The aircraft is under some strange control and is now turning itself. The controls are useless. In plainer words, he's been taken over completely. Now, up to this point, you're going to say to yourself, well, this is a madman. Or you may say to yourself, I know the power of the devil. I know how he can deceive. And what follows, he is taken into a city by blonde haired men who look like these Aryans that Hitler and the rest of them were talking about in Germany. And then he's finally taken to their leader. And when, he take, when he's taken to their leader, uh, he has a conversation with him. He's their master. And that master tells him that essentially that they've been observing us on top of the earth where we live for a long time and that we have gotten to the point by killing each other. And they're talking about the atomic bomb that had been just been recently dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. You know, those two, this happened 1940, uh, in 1947. I think this happened. And they were saying that we are going to have to do something with the people who dwell on earth. They tell Admiral Byrd that he's an honorable man. And they ask, and he asked him, why am I here? He, they said, because you're chosen to be here. You're a man that we can trust. We're going to tell you what's happening. We're going to tell you all of this. They tell him, they send him back. So he goes back and he tells his, his superiors. And uh, apparently they tell him to hush this up. This stays, this stays hushed, hushed. Surprise, surprise. When have we heard him right do that? He dies. This L.A. Marzulli talked about that. Comes out. Government hushing because he things says, up. I cannot leave this world without letting humanity know what has happened. I cannot leave. I must. All over the earth, God oh, is raising up a new ads. breed of wealth builders who will use their money to shape the course of world history. Tell them what happened. Before we go any further, let's ask ourselves some questions. Number one, did he write this diary? Is this Admiral Byrd's diary? Did he really, did he really write this? Number two, if he really did write this, and this is legitimate, this is his diary, then something obviously happened to this man when he was over the North Pole. Something happened. Something obviously happened to this man. Number three, regardless of whatever happened to this man, he's convinced something happened to him. So it's, it's incumbent upon us. What did this look a lot like flying saucers, eh? When he was over the North Pole. Maybe All this right. is where flying saucers come press, from. If you press this thing a little further and do a little more studying into it, you'll find out that there's an awful lot of people out there that believe the earth is hollow. Yeah, I'm going to comment on this once it's done. It's not, uh, it's not a, it, there's not a molten mass in it like they say. Now, <laughs> if you're a Bible believer, you know this. You know that the heart of this earth, hell, is located. If you believe the Bible, all right? If you believe the Bible. And if you believe the Bible, the book of Revelation makes it very plain that the bottomless pit, which is hell, was opened. And out of that pit came these creatures upon the earth. They're coming out on the earth. They're coming out on the face of the earth. Now, that's a wild thing. This is why a lot of churches in this country, an awful lot of churches in this country, absolutely refuse to read or study the book of Revelation or preach from it because it has some things in it that just literally blow your mind. And that's one of them. Talking about creatures coming up out of the bottomless pit, Apollyon and the bad and all of that. But if I'm a, and I'm a Bible believer, I believe it's real. Amen. You can get off and you can get way out in left field with a hollow earth theory. 
All right. And you can get in deep and all of this stuff that I'm just kind of going to, I'm just going to present it to you this morning in the context of what we're studying, because we're studying, we're studying a, 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 uh, a deceit that's coming on this earth of unbelievable proportions, a deceit. All right. A deceit. Now we know Germany, Germany did definitely develop during World War II some of the highest technology on the earth. I saw this the other day on the History Channel and I didn't know this. Nobody had ever told me this, but this is what the History Channel reported. That two German scientists in the 30s, in the 30s, these two German scientists had split the atom. Now think hard on that. Think hard on that. And it was the German scientists, Werner, Werner von Braun, men like that, who got America into space. That's a fact, folks. That's a fact. No question about that. And the only reason they didn't put them to death at Nuremberg with the trials was because they needed them. And so they, they needed their technology and what have you. Anyway, Germany uh, apparently was, was, was way ahead of the rest of the world in some of this technology. Germany had a society called the Vril Society, V-R-I-L. How many have ever heard that term? Most people haven't, but a few of you have, all right? That's, a, that's, a, that's an occult society. But the premise of the Vril Society was this. They were able to tap into satanic power and apply it to physical things. See? They were able to tap into satanic, to occult power. They called it, a, they called it whatever force they called it. We know what it is. The power is either of God or the devil. Amen. But they tapped into it and they were able to apply it to physical things. There are photographs of flying saucers the Germans made. I've seen them, but they're not flying saucers like, like, you know, the classic example of them, but they are flying saucers. In other words, they are propelled by a propulsion, propulsion system that was unknown by most of the world at that time. But in any event, the bottom line is that the Germans had tapped into the occult world and had begun to, to, uh, to, to build this system based on what they were getting from the occult world. And that system was, was this. They believed that in the north, in the north, they believed in the north, that there was an entrance into a hollow earth and that spirit beings lived there that were vastly superior to us. And that these spirit beings were our forefathers. And that's what we, and this is why the root race theory is so important when you get into this stuff. You remember I told you about the root race? You remember what rate, what, which one I told you the Aryan was? There's seven of them. Five, exactly. Five. It's number five. It's the fifth. And this root race theory, the Theosophists taught it. Blavatsky in Russia taught it. All of this, all of this evolutionary, spiritual evolutionary that brings this super race, this super identity. These people believe that. The evolution, when you talk about biological evolution, all right, you're talking about what they teach at UT and all the major colleges in the world. They teach biological evolution. What is biological evolution? That's what Charles Darwin taught, right? All right, that's simple enough on the surface of it for people to relate to biological evolution. I don't believe it, but they, that's what they teach. All right. Then there is social evolution. All right. Political correctness is a product of social evolution. What's social evolution? Well, if biological evolution is true, then social evolution is where the, is where the masses and humanity and governments are able to uh, learn how to live, uh, live, in, live in peace and blah, blah, and so forth. In plain words, social evolution means that there must be a one world government for men to live. That's social evolution. See, that's not biological evolution. But the idea is that if evolution is true, they believe it is, then therefore there must, that, that justifies the idea, well, men, men must live together. Then there, is, then there is this esoteric, this spiritual, this, this stuff here we're talking about that Admiral Byrd saw. There is that type of evolution. And this gets into the very, this gets into the mystical category of it because this gets into that high brow stuff about 
the spirit beings that are channelers and guides and are communicating with people. And the U.S. government would never tell you this, but they've had all kinds of experiments into this. And they've got <coughs> labs and they've done an underground labs and they're doing experimentation into this stuff. And, they're, and, and, and all of this is going on right now. And people go off on the deep end when they get into it. And you got to be awful careful with it because you can get into this stuff and you can become possessed by these spirits because these are demons and these demons are smart. Admiral Byrd saw something. I don't doubt that for a minute, but he did not see a civilization of advanced beings that had evolved to that point. What he saw was either an apparition or a physical manifestation of some spirit power that's demonic. That's what he saw. But it blows my mind to begin to realize how powerful it is. What I'm going to say to you this morning, I want to say, I want to say it to you, and I want you to take it to heart. When the deception comes, if you're not a born-again believer, you'll be swept away with it. The deception will be greater than you ever imagined in your life. It is going to be profound as to what happens. When Ted Gunderson talked about, and I put it together, he talked about people in the high places are Satanist. What he's talking about, they're Illuminati. He's talking about spiritual power in high places that will bring about a one world government. And by doing that, they intend to rule the world. And they have the help of a whole, I don't know, what, you, what do you call it? A, a, a mass of demonic spirits who are able to perform all kinds of miracles, deceptive miracles, manifestations and all of this stuff to help them to bring about that one world government. And the goal is so that they can put one man up and worship him as God, the Antichrist. Now, there is a mind behind all of it. There's a mind directing it, and that mind is the devil, Lucifer. He wants worship. He wants worship. He, he, he covets worship. He does. And money's nothing to him. And the souls of men and power is nothing to him. He's got power. He covets worship. That's why he said to the Lord Jesus Christ, you fall down and worship me. And I'll give you the kingdoms of the world. He covets it. Now, now when you look around yourself and I'm, what I'm talking about, you know, I've, I've talked about bird and I've talked about this other stuff. You got to ask yourself the question. Well, how long is it going to be then? I mean, they've got all this technology. They've got all this stuff going. How long is it going to be before they bring this together and they do it? They're already doing it. It's already happening. It's already happening. There you go. I almost wonder <clears throat> if that's not the Garden of Eden, that North Pole, or at least the throne that's talked to because. I mean, go back to our video on the seven seals, uh, Revelation 4. You know, when you look down at the North Pole, that's where the Aurora Borealis is. And that's where you see the constellations which match the four living creatures, the lion, the calf, the face of the man, and the flying eagle. I mean, I don't think it's any coincidence that that's where General Byrd was flying and he happened to see the civilization. I mean, what if that is where the, where the devil is? You know yeah. where flying saucers are coming from. You know maybe they're making these little green, these little gray alien, uh, you know, devil spirit suits that the devil spirits can inhabit to, you know, have physical bodies when they're not, you know, inhabiting a person or possessing a person. Yeah. So uh, my belief all along, when it comes to Nazi Germany, is that they, before the war had started, they had already been in Antarctica. I truly believe that they came in contact with, you know, the, um, what do you say, the, the fallen angels uh, offspring or the, the spirits that were in... Ne ne Nephilim. Yeah, the Nephilim or the embodied spirits that were, you know, were in those, um, what did L.A. Marzulli call it? Um, they were essentially... Biologics. Uh, yeah, biological vessels. Anyways, they had advanced technology. And if you think about this, there was two civilizations in history that tried to exterminate the Jews. You had Egypt and you had 
Nazi Germany, both of them had advanced technology. Where did they get this advanced technology? From the people, or the demons, the fallen angels' offspring, the Nephilim, those spirits, disembodied spirits, had the technology that they provided to Egypt and clearly to Nazi Germany. Nazi Germany was light years ahead of their opposition once World War II started. They had rockets mm. and tanks that were uh, unbeatable. Everything, I mean, just everything they had was next level that had not been discovered yet. And when Nazi Germany fell, all of those scientists came to the U.S. under Operation Paperclip and helped them finish the atom bomb that they used to end World War II in the Pacific by dropping two of them on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And those very intelligent men that helped do that never left our country. There was thousands of them in politicians and in scientists that rose through the ranks. I truly believe that our government is still infiltrated by this same group of people. They were Satanists. They were, you know, occultists. And you can see it in everything that the world elites do now is they are all Satanists. I believe it all originated in Nazi Germany in the 30s because of the technology that they got from those fallen angel Nephilim disembodied spirits when they found it in Antarctica in the early 30s. And it shaped society ever since. That's just yeah. my take on it. And my discernment tells me I'm spot on. That's just my take on it. Wow. Wow, what a night. Man, we covered the gamut, didn't we? <laughs> yeah. Abomination of desolation. <sighs> I really like your idea on that, man. The, you know, the more I sit it, here it and just think lines about up. it. It I mean, does. it looks like that's the start of the Great Tribulation. So just by deductive reasoning, that seems like it's something that's happening in a holy place. And it's going to offend uh, the Muslims. Oh, for sure. And, and, and this is not a statement to seem partial to one group or the other. But it is truly my belief that the culture that he just named, the one with the red, green, um, black flags, yep. they are truly deceived by that prophet. It starts with an M. Yeah. I truly believe that he was deceived. And that is another form of the Church of Satan. If you read their holy book, the book that starts with uh, the Q, their description of their Messiah, the Mahdi, matches the little horn, the Antichrist, listed in our Bible to the letter. I'm telling you guys, look into it. That is just another form of Satanism. Essentially, and I've said this many times, it, it, if, if you are not following Christ in the Bible and those key fundamentals, you know, forget all the different organized religions because there, it's been proven that even organized religion in the name of Christianity is not what it is. You were right. either on Team Christ and that's with the Word of God or your Team Satan. There's no third option. I don't care if it's you know, the Islamic nation or the Catholic church or the Hinduism or Buddhist, anything that is not team Christ and following the word of God is team Satan. There is not a third option, which is why the Bible says very clearly the path is far and wide to destruction, meaning people yeah. go into hell, but the path is very narrow to life very narrow to heaven and very few will find it. And the reason why is, is the organized religion is a deception arranged by Satan. And most people think they are good because of the thick, thick deception that has fallen on this earth. 
But I, I hate to break it to folks. That's not how it is. The reality is very simple. You either have your feet firmly planted with Christ and the word of God is your rock or you are on team Satan. That's it. There's no third option. I don't care what people hate on me in the comments. The truth burns. I'm telling you, that's just how it is. Amen, brother. Yeah. All right. Well, I had fun with you guys tonight. It's uh, yeah, and it we a went night. two hours again. <laughs> yep. Um. We, go ahead. We even we even had a guest drive by. <laughs> with <Kip>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still trying to wonder who was dialing it earlier. Where there was. Someone that, you know, because the, the software auto answers, and I looked at him, I'm like, who are you? <laughs> Interesting. I didn't know who he was. I wonder if there was a guest coming up that he thought it was his night. Oh, uh, maybe. Yeah. Tomorrow, uh, Dr. Sean has a uh, program in the morning. I always look forward to hearing what he has to say. He's on at 10 a.m. Tomorrow night, though. I'm excited about this one. It uh, The gentleman's name is, uh, I think it's Dannon. Uh, no, it's has, Domniac. Domniac? He has Domniac the, best, Morrow. the best NDE story I have ever heard. Hmm. When I saw it on, I think, Delete Deep Believer, and I'll link you guys to his story. It was the most compelling NDE I had ever heard. This guy, he kind of grew up a gangster in Chicago. He was shot several times in a gang altercation. He went straight to hell. And his story and account was so detailed and so compelling, it left chills on my skin. And I had I went to great lengths to find a, how to get a hold of this guy. He was very receptive. He was super cool. He signed up on our social media platform, and we've been texting since. But this guy, man, his story was so compelling that it's it's gone down uh, as a favorite in my NDE story. So he's on tomorrow night at 9 o'clock. Hmm. I am adding the videos we watch to the description right now. So you guys, if you want those links, they will be there. Yes, and for, for folks that have not signed up on our social media platform, make sure you guys go there. We have pretty much uh, our entire community is congregated there. It's a lot of fun. Uh, there's a lot of flexibility and options there. You, there's, you know, we have a lot to offer on our social platform. And uh, the thing is this, is the general public uh, gets screened. We just don't let... You know, we don't verify everybody. I make sure that you guys yeah. are part of the community. Uh, I'm not sure how long we can do that because uh, it's kind of we're getting flooded. But I really try to take the time to make sure that who's there with us um, is truly there for the same interest we are. We have plenty of people on the site, so we don't need to flood it with just anybody. It, the, the site has a, an enormous amount of activity and just about everybody that's uh, in the chat each night, they're all there. And this platform is ours. It's on our server. There's not a, you know, a board of directors or sponsors or investors that dictate the policy. Uh, it's watchful in mind. And yep. We're, we're just about sharing the truth. That's that's all we are and the word of God. So that's why we have it. And secondly, the persecution of our community is only going to continue to grow. Just like in Canada, they've already, you know, essentially outlawed Christianity. You can go to jail by talking about it in the public. It's just going to continue to get worse. So and my theory is, is trying to get ahead of the eight ball where we can have our own community because eventually these other social media platforms, uh, they will ban this type of talk. Yeah, so. we have one app in the app store. It's the video app. Uh, we will have the social networking app in the app store probably next week, uh, just depending on how long it takes them to approve it. Uh, we are so we have so many people on the network right now that we're having to do an upgrade tonight. So if it's a little slow tonight, we're going to be doing a big upgrade tonight so that it'll get a little bit more speed. 
Yeah, it's we we keep upgrading and it keeps getting onto a faster server, but our user growth we looks like we average about twenty five new users a day. Yeah. Um, so I'm trying to slow it down, but the the folks that I want there are our community. You know, I, I don't mind other folks coming, but it, the community is there for us to all congregate and share and help each other out. We witness here on the show to anybody and everybody. We hope that even the enemy watches our show. Though yeah. in our social community, it's it's really the idea is this to have our core group of people there. And anybody watching the show is welcome. Just understand we won't tolerate any shenanigans. We're there to love and and share information. It's okay to disagree but we're not there to be hateful or to spread lies or a false narrative. We're all on the same page. So we really enjoyed everybody tonight. It's uh, it's always so much fun with you guys. I love chatting with you in the chat and um, we'll see you tomorrow morning for those who's going to be there at 10 a.m. with Dr. Sean. If not, we'll see you tomorrow night at nine o'clock. But guys, thank you so much. Remember, salvation is the free gift available uh, available for everybody. You got anything else, Watchful? Shalom, shalom. All right, guys. Love you all. See you tomorrow. <laughs>